Welcome everyone to the second day of GeoIgnite. My name is Jonathan Murphy. I'm the chair of the conference and it's my great honor to be presenting it to you today. Um, we've got a great lineup of talks starting right away with uh, the vice president of the Canadian Space Agency, uh, Luc Brulé. Um, it's really exciting to have him with us. He's going to be sharing um, new information and talking about the CSA. Uh, so, Luke, if you could uh, join us. Thank you. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning. Well, I'm going to uh, leave it to you now. Thank you very much. We're looking forward to hearing your thoughts. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jonathan, for this uh, nice introduction. So hello everyone and uh, bonjour à tout le monde. I would like to thank the GeoIgnite organizers for delivering such an event in these challenging times and bring together Canada's geospatial and space-based Earth observation community. This topic is a special one for me. I have a special connection with CSA's many activities relating to geospatial technologies and Earth observation since I used to be the director of Earth observation for many years here at the Canadian Space Agency. GeoIgnite is a great event. It brings together Canada's experts from academia, government and industry to meet and learn from one another and collaborate on projects that will lead to the innovations of tomorrow and ultimately improve the lives of Canadians everywhere. Je parlerai donc de nombreuses activités liées aux technologies géospatiales et à l'observation de la Terre depuis l'espace. Durant ma présentation, je vais me concentrer sur nos efforts des dernières années en matière d'observation de la Terre depuis l'espace, ou ce qu'on appelle en anglais SBO, an acronym that is becoming more and more familiar to everyone, c'est-à-dire soit la collecte et l'interprétation des données des satellites qui regardent notre planète en évolution. It's interesting that I'm doing this talk today on Earth Day. As you know, we, uh, we hear a lot about what the the various countries in the world will do about uh, climate change and the, uh, the, uh, the emission of gas. Uh, emission of gas. So it's going to be interesting uh, to see where uh, the, the world will lead us and especially the world leaders. So it is an exciting time for space-based Earth observation. We are very pleased with recent funding announced to advance Canada's capabilities for receiving and operating satellites with investments in our ground-based SBO infrastructure. Similarly, the announcement of additional funding for the Earth Observation Services Continuity Project is a strong signal to the commitment this government has in continuing Canada's place as a world leader in SBEO. In addition, technology is advancing rapidly. Sensors are collecting more data at finer resolutions. Satellites are becoming smaller and cheaper to launch and cutting edge instruments are adding new capabilities to spacecraft. A quick look at our ecosystem, and it is clear that the long history of investments into SBU in Canada are paying off in terms of innovative ideas and applications that help Canadians every day and everywhere. For instance, as a country spanning almost 10 million square kilometers, Canada has always faced a challenge in collecting the information needed to monitor our environment and provide services from coast to coast to coast. There was the Alouette 1 satellite that made Canada the third country to operate a spacecraft. Et puis, dans les années 90, le Canada a atteint de nouveaux sommets avec le développement de la mission Radarsat 1, dont l'histoire se poursuit aujourd'hui avec la mission de la constellation Radarsat, composée de trois satellites très performants qui a été lancé en juin 2019. Aujourd'hui, la constellation Radarsat fournit des données essentielles à plus de 60 services qui soutiennent les Canadiens dans leur vie quotidienne, allant de la sécurité du passage des navires dans nos voies navigables à l'identification rapide des effets des inondations et des glissements de terrain afin de protéger les infrastructures et de soutenir les premiers intervenants. As we enter the third decade of the 21st century, the world of SBU is continuing to evolve at a rapid pace. The unique data collected by satellites is rapidly becoming the raw material of the digital age. When combined with artificial intelligence and, power, and powerful computing, space data, 
prom promises to unlock the potential for a multitude of new cutting edge applications to meet today's and tomorrow's challenges on Earth. Let me say a few words about the state of SBEU in Canada today. So it is hard to imagine going a single day without access to the space-based EO data we need to understand our planet and how it is changing. Investments in SBEO technology and capability contribute to building a world-class space sector full of talented researchers, entrepreneurs, and public servants, applying their skills and minds to the challenges that face us in the 21st century. In the most recent survey related to the state of the Canadian space sector, you can see that the EO revenues totaled 278 million, and there were over 100 SBO downstream companies here in Canada. And our perspective is this numbers are really in a position to grow in the coming years. The sector Canadian d'observation de la Terre est en croissance. On dit qu'il s'agit d'un secteur économique qui devrait tripler au cours de la prochaine décennie. La plupart des entreprises canadiennes dans ce secteur opèrent dans la transformation des données et des services géospatiaux. Ces PME sont agiles et nées au cours des dix dernières années seulement. Combiné avec les chefs de file mondiaux établis au Canada en matière de fabrication de satellites et de l'interprétation des données, on se retrouve avec un écosystème économique diversifié et prêt à faire face à l'avenir. Et on a fait nos preuves. Certains de nos actifs spatiaux ont une durée de vie impressionnante qui ont largement dépassé nos attentes. Prenons par exemple le SciSat. Conçu comme un projet de deux ans, le vaisseau spatial SciSat est en orbite depuis plus de 17 ans. Le satellite recueille un ensemble de données essentielles pour mieux comprendre l'atmosphère et le climat de la Terre. Et c'est grâce à une politique de données ouvertes que le retour sur l'investissement de SciSat a permis de nombreuses découvertes et la publication de centaines d'articles scientifiques. Cela prouve l'effet multiplicateur des investissements en matière d'observation de la Terre depuis l'espace et des politiques de données ouvertes. Exciting new opportunities are also emerging in data reception, storage and data transformation. For a country like Canada, it is critical to focus on our ability to host and move large amounts of data to address our national interests. And equally critical to ensure we have the ability to transform this data and deliver useful information to users. Canada's SBO landscape is undoubtedly poised for its most exciting developments, but there are challenges as well. All in all, with a growing digital economy, post-pandemic economic recovery, and the ongoing challenges associated, associated with climate change, data and information about our natural and built environments are higher in demand than ever. L'ASC et nos partenaires reconnaissent le besoin de soutenir la chaîne de valeur de l'observation de la Terre depuis l'espace. Des événements comme GeoIgnite sont essentiels pour connecter les personnes œuvrant dans la chaîne de valeur et ainsi créer des opportunités commerciales, des collaborations en matière de recherche ou simplement obtenir une mise à jour dans le domaine. The CSA and its partners recognize the need for support across all areas of the SBEO value chain. We are looking toward the future and we want to ensure all components of the value chain are working together. This is to make sure that there is no gap in the system and that we can secure SBO data to meet the ongoing priorities and needs of Canadians. Nous voyons l'avenir du paysage de l'observation de la Terre depuis l'espace au Canada évoluer comme une communauté intersectorielle où les données sont ouvertes et accessibles. Cette communauté inclut également les Canadiens possédant des compétences en analyse des données, en modélisation, en génie aérospatial, en affaires, en administration publique et dans une myriade d'autres domaines hautement qualifiés. Des hommes et des femmes qui sont là pour appliquer leurs connaissances au profit de la société dans son ensemble. In essence, we see the future of Canada's SBO landscape evolving as a, as a vibrant community 
of cross-sectional collaborations where experts apply their skills to issue to issues that matter to Canadians for the benefit of society as a whole. Right now, 17 federal departments having, have been collaborating over the past few years to establish a whole of government approach to strengthening Canada's SBO landscape. And by the way, I hope you were uh, able to attend the SBO panel session yesterday to learn more about our federal efforts in this domain. The vision of the Government of Canada for the future is one where advanced Earth observation satellites capabilities are mainstream throughout Canada's major industrial and natural resources sectors, digital economy, science and research institutions, and public service. While knowing the Government of Canada's direction is beneficial for every player, we must remain adaptive and flexible to a dynamic environment in order to seize emerging opportunities. The context that includes businesses, academia, and other government partners as well. This is because building new satellites and preparing for their data sets, as well as coordinating the complexity of the SBU value chain into a single system, means that decisions made today must look forward five, 10, and even 15 years to ensure continuity and compatibility. A commitment to end-to-end -end thinking for satellite design all the way to data product delivery must drive our efforts. Recognizing this, we know that satellite data streams need to be complementary and compatible to other forms of geospatial data, as well as wider socioeconomic big data that is increasingly being introduced in geospatial products. La combinaison d'ensemble de données et la création de nouveaux outils de visualisation, qui constituent une grande partie du travail présenté à cette conférence, repose également sur la disponibilité et l'accessibilité des données. Reconnaître les tendances mondiales ainsi que les énormes avantages sociétaux créés par les ensembles de données ouvertes, l'ASC et nos partenaires agissent conformément aux engagements du gouvernement en matière de distribution ouverte et de transformation Et je dis là, de distribution au vertige et transparente des données. Ceci est particulièrement essentiel pour faire progresser les efforts mondiaux dans la lutte contre les changements climatiques. Of course, throughout this SBEO initiative, we have engaged stakeholders across industry and academia, as well as provincial, local, territorial governments and indigenous communities. I want to thank each and every member of the Canadian SBO community or anyone else who has and continues to engage with us by presenting needs and opportunities as we move forward. So far, stakeholders' feedback indicates strong support for advancing SBO capability in Canada. The key messages received to date includes, first, Increasing access to open SBEO data sets from Canadians and international government satellites. Second, facilitating collaboration between SBEO stakeholders across sectors and across the value chain, from satellite and antenna manufacturers to data handlers and product developers. Third, strengthening international cooperation and expanding opportunities for Canadian companies and researchers on the international stage. Fourth, creating opportunities for the development of business solutions to address priorities of the Government of Canada and Canadians. And finally, outlining long-term priorities for go the government, which would allow industry to shape their business plans and academia to identify necessarily necessary curricula to train the next generation of workers. Le dernier point est particulièrement important. Nous avons entendu haut et fort, autant à l'interne, au gouvernement qu'à l'externe, que le Canada doit se concentrer sur la formation de nos experts de demain. De l'expertise en télédétection, en analyse de données, au soutien entrepreneurial et aux bourses d'études, nous savons que notre écosystème sera solide que si l'expertise répond à l'appel et s'engage à la faire avancer. 
Heureusement, nous savons où se trouvent les occasions de financement et de formation pour ceux et celles qui sont au début de leur aventure dans l'écosystème de l'observation de la Terre depuis l'espace. So in conclusion, Canada's future economic and environmental security depends on our ability to keep up, understand, and respond quickly to changes. Today, Canada's coasts, waters, and cities are, cha are changing rapidly as a result of accelerating climate change. With a sustained and collective effort across Canada, through a new coordinated all-of-society approach and increasing ease of access to open data, the benefits derived from SBEO can be leveraged to strengthen the economy and address global issues. In fact, the challenges of the 21st century demand that, demand that Canada respond with 21st century tools, i.e. an integrated, free and open SBO system capable of putting Canadians in a position to thrive. Canada cannot fall behind. We must be a responsible global actor that contributes to global science efforts on climate change and other pressing international issues. J'aimerais le répéter, les défis du 21e siècle exigent que le Canada réponde avec des outils du 21e siècle. Alors que d'autres pays investissent dans leur propre système d'observation de la Terre depuis l'espace, le Canada ne peut, pas prendre, ne peut pas prendre du retard dans sa compétitivité économique, dans sa gestion des changements climatiques ou dans l'octroi de services aux citoyens. As entrepreneurs look to start new companies, universities, departments looking to modernize curricula, and industries look to grow their workforce, the principles discussed in my talk will be vital to providing stability and confidence for Canada's geospatial and SBEO sector. Over the coming years, the CSA and its partners will continue engaging with experts and users across the country to adapt to changing needs and priorities. We are committed to a strong and dynamic space-based Earth observation environment that serves the need of Canadians, and you are all part of it. That ends my talk, and thank you, merci, and back to you, Jonathan. Thank you very much, Mr. Brule. What a fantastic talk. Thank you for sharing those updates and the vision for the future for the SBEO. Um, everybody, um, uh, Mr. Brule reminded me it is Earth Day. So um, yeah, we should all be remarking it is Earth Day. And, and thinking about that and what it means in terms of our work um, as well. It's now time for the Q&A uh, at this point. So please use the Q&A tool um, to ask questions. We've got about 10 minutes now for the Q&A. I'd like to get things started off. Um, I have a question in, uh, for Mr. Brulé. What do you see the role for the private sector? Uh, in the future of the SBEO and the federal government? So if we you know, well, before I answer that question, I just want to say, when you try to do a speech in both languages, I had, I missed the word, the word green gas. I only had the word, gas <laughs> effet okay. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> no worries. No worries. So we it's don't. green gas. So that's, that's what we're, the challenge we have in front of us in the coming years. So. Thank you for your good uh, feedback, Jonathan. It's very much appreciated. So to, to answer your question, I would say we need to really start from the what we call the uh, space-based EO uh, value chain. So we have the, you know, the upstream where we need to build satellite, manufacture satellite, the, down, the midstream where we do the data reception, archiving, and, and pre-processing, and then the, uh, the downstream where we do the, the, the value-added activities. So in, in those three elements, the, uh, the industry uh, needs to play a, a central role. Uh, we see ourselves in the government clearly defining what the challenges are, discussing with uh, our stakeholders and our partners, their perspective also on their challenges. And we look toward the industry to help us find solutions so that we can make, make our uh, SBO stronger and better in the future. So it's not just uh, federal departments working on SBEO, but we need to work hand in hand with industry to develop the innovative solutions of tomorrow. 
and respond to the ever-growing needs of departments for data processing and uh, new applications for making very good use of the SBEO data. Uh, I cannot also forget to mention the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the universities, the academic world. They can also help a lot in, in all, uh, developing new, new applications and new ideas with, uh, with, with us in, in the future. Thank you. Um, there's some questions coming in on the Q&A, so I would like to turn to that. There's one from Irene. How does Canada... How does the Canadian position compare with Europe, Germany, and the U.S.? I would imagine that's in terms of our SBEO strategy. So, you know, when we developed the, uh, our own strategy, uh, we did, did work closely with our partners in Europe and also in the U.S. This, uh, this partnership is very strong. Uh, I think we, uh, it's clear that uh, you know, they're making significant progress on their side. We can see it, especially uh, you know, in Europe, when you, you think about the, uh, the Sentinel program and the, the, the various applications that they have with this program. And uh, we continue to work closely with them as well. And uh, we have uh, agreements for ex uh, exchange of data between their system and our system. So what they're doing is, uh, what I should say is what we're proposing to do is very much aligned with with what is being developed in Europe. So this notion of a value chain that, uh, is, is important. It's not only a matter of building satellites, it's also having the right infrastructure to receive the imagery and also the, uh, all the work we need to do to develop new applications. So in terms of, uh, and as I said in my talk, I think we are at a critical point now where we need to take the right decisions and make the right investments so that we don't fall behind. I think we, we are still in the run. We are still doing well. But I think now is a time where we need to make significant investments to, uh, to proceed. I think the, uh, you know, we had the, uh, the announcements in the budget on Monday. I think we see at the CSA and also in, our, in the other departments, you know, we're working closely with other departments. I mentioned 17 departments being connected to this. But we're also working closely. We have a core group working with uh, Environment Canada and Natural Resources Canada. So the three departments were quite pleased with what we saw in the, in the, in the, in the budget. Uh, we see the beginning of, uh, of something significant for us. I think the fact that we've been recognized as a priority is key. Now it's a matter for us to clearly structure the program so that we can get future investments in the future. Well said. Um, it's definitely clear to many of us that the some of the challenges that we face globally and as a country need, we need these tools, um, they're required. And we also need uh, to pivot a little bit, the human resources. Can I ask you about um, maybe the engagement you're doing with colleges and universities in terms of capacity building um, for, to support the SBEO? So, uh, yeah, at the CSA, we do have ongoing programs working closely with uh, many of the universities. <clears throat> so th this is an, a continuous ongoing uh, effort. Uh, without uh, going into the details of those programs, I think there are several opportunities for universities to, uh, to participate. Uh, the, uh, you know, within, the, within, within my sector in science and technology, we have, uh, we have a... We have a person called Marie-Claude Gerard. She's the DG responsible for capacity building. And she has several connections with many of the universities, uh, helping them uh, connect. Uh, you might have heard also of those hackathon we've done where we put uh, sets, you know, sets of open data on the, on the web and we give challenges to students to develop new applications using those. So this notion of open data giving access uh, is important. Having programs to help students also develop uh, new software is also uh, important to us. Another inter interesting example we, ha we have this, uh, which is a bit uh, si uh, on the side with this, but it's connected. We have uh, what we call the CubeSat program. So we've connected with universities in all provinces in Canada. In each, each, uh, there's a university in each province building a small satellite with an application and many of those applications are 
related to observing the earth. So they have, it's interesting to see how motivated the, the people are and they're, they're really the, the manpower of tomorrow. So they're building their knowledge and expertise in building little satellites, but they also have this preoccupation. It's not just building the satellite, but it's also being able to receive the data, being able to analyze the data, data and be able to write papers on their findings. So with the combination of the various programs we have at the CSA, we are certainly well connected with uh, universities. And hopefully today uh, with, uh, you know, with today and yesterday with Geo Ignite, I think hopefully those connections also are also st being strengthened. And uh, don't be afraid to uh, like, for example, write to me or write to, uh, to Marie-Claude Guerard, the DG responsible for capacity building. And we'll make sure those connections continue to grow. Thank you very much. There, yeah, there is an SBO, SBEO um, page that we will publish on GoGematics. It's like a paper describing the strategy and there's a call for um, feedback. Now I know that that, uh, that call out for feedback was over the summer and fall of 2020, but I believe it's still up. So um, we, we will put information up about it on the GoGematics website. Uh, Mr. Brule, we have a, uh, I'm going to set one of the questions to answer live. It's from Tom Landry. I don't know if you can see it in the, um, the Q and A it's in French. Uh, and instead of me uh, making a poor attempt at um, reading it, uh, I was wondering if you could uh, see it. Yeah, I do see it. So let me, let me read it. So do you want me to read it? Uh, yeah, please read it. You can, we have live French and English translation. So okay. if you want to read it in French, go ahead. So, il est clair que les données massives d'observation de la Terre sont essentielles à l'étude de l'évolution du climat. Ces observations servent entre autres à produire des projections climatiques. Comment le SBO s'intégrera au système de prévision et de projection? Merci, Tom, pour, pour la question. C'est sûr qu'aujourd'hui, j'ai mis peut-être un peu, un peu plus d'emphase sur les missions spatiales euh, de l'Agence spatiale, en incluant, comme par exemple, le programme RadarSat ou SciSat. Mais dans, la philosophie des SBIO est vraiment une d'être un, un système ouvert où c'est important d'aller chercher les datasets qui existent euh, au niveau national et international et puis d'assurer une bonne intégration de ces choses-là dans nos systèmes. Euh, comme j'ai mentionné aussi, on travaille étroitement avec euh, Ressources naturelles Canada et Environnement Canada. So in our discussion with Environment Canada, it's quite clear that uh, climate change and having space-based earth observation concerning climate change is a key priority for them. So as part of the SBU initiative, we do have a few um, potential missions that we are working on. And uh, we're also now with the new administration in the US, uh, as you probably know, and we, again, because of our day and the role of Mr. Uh, the President Biden, we can see that climate change is becoming more important. We know that NASA is uh, investing uh, again in, in large EO missions. So we intend to work with them and uh, see what could be Canada's contribution to those uh, Earth observation missions. Uh, related to uh, monitoring climate change. So SBEO uh, needs to take that into account when we build the architecture. So we, we, don't, we don't see ourselves like we're done with the definition of SBEO today because we got funding in a budget. What we got is just the beginning. So we need to adapt. We need to see what, the, what we get from existing missions. We need to understand what are the new challenges we have to address. What are the new missions we need to work on? We need to work closely with our partners uh, internationally also. We're trying to share the load in terms of uh, who should take care of which mission. So, évidemment, au Canada, on a beaucoup d'intérêt par rapport à l'Arctique. Nos, uh, nos collègues en, en Europe et en, aux États-Unis nous encouragent beaucoup à penser à des missions uh, spatiales pour regarder l'évolution du climat dans l'Arctique. C'est le genre d'études sur lequel on travaille présentement. So, I hope uh, I'm giving you the beginning of an answer, Tom. Merci. Thank you, Tom. Merci beaucoup. I, uh, we, I think if you don't mind, we, if we have time for one more uh, point of discussion, a question, um, it's related. We talked a lot on the uh, Director General's panel yesterday about um, 
RCM and SAR. Um, how is the government working to ensure that there's no gap in the SAR data service after RCM reaches the end of life? So, yeah, so it'd be, uh, the, uh, it's interesting because, uh, you know, as I said in my talk, I, I've been involved in EO for, for many years at the, the Canadian Space Agency. So when we, uh, you know, almost at the, mo at the moment when we launched RadarSat1, we were already thinking about RadarSat2. So uh, same, the same thing, when we launched uh, RadarSat2, we were already thinking about RCM. So today we are already thinking about what should be the successor mission to, to RCM. And in fact, the, uh, the early investment we got in the budget on Monday is it, one element is really for that purpose, to see how we can move from a, a radar set constellation mission to something new, but that will satisfy the needs of, of the government of Canada and also of, uh, of our EO community here in Canada. So the, the next mission, will it, what will it look like? I think the, there is a, an interest now, a stronger interest in industry. You know, we talk a lot about commercial uh, space. So we see uh, a lot of uh, progress uh, on the commercial side for uh, bringing commercial EO missions on orbit. And so it's gonna be interesting to see how we decide are we talking about building a government owned and operated system as the next mission? Or are we moving now to a more commercial approach where we're gonna buy services from uh, Canadian companies here in Canada? So the, uh, the future is quite interesting in front of us and we'll see in the coming months uh, where we're gonna go with this, uh, this important decision for Canada. Thank you very much. And that concludes our, our uh, time with the Vice President of the CSA, uh, Luke Brulé. Thank you so much for uh, sharing generously of your time and um, your updates from the CSA. So thank you very much, Jonathan. And thank you for the, the interesting questions we got today. So I hope I shed some lights on what we're doing here at the CSA. So again, thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you to the participants for the questions. We're going to be going to a break now. Uh, we'll see you on the other side fairly soon. See you, everybody. Bye.